Hey everyone, today we're just going to be talking programming concepts, so you're not going to need Unity specifically open for this video, n nor uh, your Visual Studio. So let's get straight into it. We're talking object-oriented programming today. Object-oriented programming is an intermediate topic. It could be difficult for beginners to try and understand, so make sure you've watched other programming videos on general concepts for them before you start with this. If you've watched my basic programming tutorial that I did uh, a while ago, which isn't the best at introducing uh, what I talked about here, basically I talk about the idea of class. A class is difficult to explain, which is why I am making this video. So in object-oriented programming, we talk about a class or an object having what I guess you could call state and behavior. So behavior, I've got examples of here. Behavior is something like you can run, you can jump, uh, or attack, or you can block. These are all things that a character in our game does, right? A, the, the player can actively block an enemy's attack, or they will be able to eventually. Uh, you will be able to jump and run as this tutorial is released. So we have a lot of things in common that these two can do. Uh, we'll probably even be making more things that they have in common. With that being said, what is the most efficient way of putting these two things in a game together? You could obviously create the player in two different scripts and make a jump script and a movement script, and then we could go ahead and make an attack script, and that could be all well and good, and we could have components that we can turn on and off and make a basic platformer, or we could change and modify things and use things where we want them to. While doing that, we could also create an enemy, where the enemy can interact with the player, and they can hit them, and they can abuse them, and shout things at them for all we care. Uh, but we'll be coding it independently, right? So we've got stuff that we can code for the player, and stuff that we can code for the enemy, and we'll just make two different uh, sets of programming that, you know, don't cross over and don't interact. I think you get the point of what I'm saying. We're going to make it so that our system is a little bit more in unison. We're going to make things reference other things. Because if you think about it, what happens if I want to put one of these in the game? Because then I've coded a player. I've coded something to slow the player down when going through my beautifully uh, coded and drawn levels. But what does the companion do? Do I copy some code from the player? Do I copy some code from the enemy? Uh, do I create an entirely new object in my game in, like, and, you know, waste another, I guess, month of our time? What is the most efficient way of putting these three things in the game together? Alright, now, let's come up with another idea. What if I want to put one of these in the game? This isn't like one of these, because one of these follows one of these around, right? And this tries to kill this and this. But what if you're just this? I mean, this could kill this, and this could kill this. Because, you know, this is friends with this, but not necessarily this. You know what I mean? So how do you put all four of these in the game together? Well, I guess what you've got to try and think of is, what are they? And I'm going to scroll up for the answer. Yep, it's it's that simple. They are all characters. Uh, video over. That's it. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna drag this down, and we're gonna talk about what all of these have in common. Well, a character is something that lives inside our world. It is a, I guess, living and breathing thing that we want to, you know, have moving around. The thing about object-oriented programming is it talks about having things in many different states. And the different states that they have make them perform different behavior. So we're starting to get a little bit ahead of ourselves, but I'm going to zoom out a little bit now. And we're going to go look over here. So we've got these two different kinds of diagrams. We've got this thing called a character, who is supposed to be all four of these at once, and we're going to use the words on the screen here to try and create some kind of reference and some kind of programming concept between them. 
Uh, Josh, you've lost the plot. Seriously, are you really making other video of you talking to yourself again? I'm sick of your shenanigans. There is you're nothing bullshit. wrong with me talking to myself. Kidding? This is the way you don't get any matches on Tinder, mate. People are going to think you're weird. Now, seriously, you better get a handle on <laughs> yourself. What are you talking about? People you. think I'm weird. I'm going to get a hold of you. You better fuck. We're talking object-oriented programming. For those of you who haven't studied it before, it's one of the, I guess you could call it silver bullet programming fundamentals. Everyone is taught this to some degree. Because object-oriented programming is supposed to be used to model the world around us. What do these words mean? Let's talk polymorphism. As I said, we, we kind of just covered it. We are going to have multiple characters in our game, no doubt, right? We want probably shops, maybe, for the vendor, uh, for the, well, for the player to buy stuff from. We want NPCs for him to get the story from, potentially. We might want companions to follow him around and make it easier to get through levels. And we definitely want enemies to, you know, fight with. Maybe have a comboing system where you can uh, block and all that kind of stuff. Believe it or not, that is polymorphism in itself. It's the idea that you can have a character, which is just pretty much a class, and then you can have it in multiple different forms. So, uh, for those of you who want an ancient Greek lesson, poly means multiple, morph means different. So you've got the fact that the character can be any of these. That is polymorphism. It is also, at the same time, inheritance. But inheritance is uh, a little bit different. These two... Uh, coincide with one another, and they have to coexist. So, whatever attributes we give a character creates whether it is an NPC, a player, a companion, or an enemy. However, all of them are derived from character, which is how they, in uh, which is to say that they inherit from a character. Uh, so we will be creating a character, which just so happens to be a player, a companion, an enemy, or an NPC the character will dictate what they can do, kind of. The player will expand upon that, that's the polymorphic uh, element of it, but they all inherit from the same roots, and so they all share some concepts. Generically, these concepts will be the actual member variables, or the variables that are shared between a parent and its child. So, a character will always have health. A player will have health. This is derived from the character. Everything that is a child of the character will have health. Polymorphism is saying that they can be any of those four things. Inheritance is saying that they go back to their roots, being the character. Encapsulation. This one works very well with inheritance, because we're going to put things in the character's uh, functionality, in his uh, state and behavior, that will dictate a bunch of stuff. Enemies, companions, players, non-player characters. They're probably all going to move in our world, potentially. NPCs, uh, I'm iffy about it, but they will definitely turn around to face you when you're talking to you. I, I will make absolutely certain of that. We already have a flip function built into our player, don't we? So why don't we just put it in the character and then tell everything that is de derived from a character that it can be, uh, that it can flip, right? It can turn around. Enemies, they're going to want to face you to try and attack you. Companions, they're going to want to face enemies and occasionally you to give you stoic lines of dialogue. Players, well, we already have them flipping. So why not make the character just be able to do that? So you see how all of these kind of concepts are working together? The weirdest one is abstraction. Abstraction is something that I did an entire uni course on by itself because it is huge. Abstraction is the idea that we can create what is called an abstract class. Abstract, you're probably thinking Picasso, or one of those other guys who decided to draw shapes and squiggles and say that it was a forest with lots of fairies in it. You know, uh, the, the guy that draws one rectangle and says that it is his entire world. That's abstract. Not very helpful in the sense of programming, so we kind of simplify things and just create what is called a character, uh, and then make it so that the character can be redefined to do a bunch of things. Abstraction is the concept of the overarching system, and you use abstraction with inheritance to create specifics. Alright, so I've created this diagram, and 
vehicles don't entirely relate to what we're doing here, but it is a good example of pretty much all of object-oriented programming. You create a vehicle, you're probably going to say that a vehicle is something that can move. You know that thing where vehicle uh, looks like it's spelled wrong because you've seen it so many different times? Yeah, I've got that right now. Anyway, we've got vehicles, we've got land vehicles, we've got land vehicles with wheels, and then we've got trucks, cars, and bikes. Each of these are different. Each of these have their own specification. And that is where abstraction and polymorphism meld. Because you've got this idea that something can be in multiple different forms, but still have the same roots or the same ancestry uh, in, in their design concept. And that's, I guess, the fundamental here. It's that we will be using things that are derived from one thing to explain the other. Now, this is all a very, haha, abstract uh, coding concept. How do, how do we even use this? Well, that will probably be in next episode or the episode after next. I'm not sure if I need to do a bug fix episode. But I feel like this was something that I needed to explain. This is something that people needed to kind of see and visualize. And if visualizing it didn't help, I feel like I've given a few examples. So I hope that was helpful. I hope that kind of talks through what we're going to be doing. Uh, we didn't talk through protections but that's not going to be too important right now. We're going to talk through that in the code. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate every single one of you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.